Welcome to another short story video from Telltale Books. This time I'm starting a, another new series. I've got a whole bunch of these going where I'm starting at the very first story an author wrote and going by order of publications, trying to go through their whole career if I can get a hold of them all. And I'm, I'm basically covering the the authors that fascinate me the most, of course, starting with H.G. Wells, and I'm doing Edgar Allan Poe, H.P. Lovecraft, Robert Heinlein, <clears throat> and uh, now I'm starting a new one, James Tiptree Jr., who is really Alice Sheldon. She wrote under the pseudonym of James Tiptree Jr. starting in the 19, late 1960s, 1968. And that's where we're going to start. It's her very first story. And <clears throat> a lot of people say she wrote under the James Tiptree Jr. pseudonym because she was a woman and you had to write as, as a man in order to get published not sure how much of that is true because half the story is the fact that she and her husband were employed by the government, employed by the CIA, and they had to conceal their identities. They they couldn't, you know, let people know who they really were in case somebody would connect them to what they did for the government and and try to use them for stealing state secrets so they had to um, hide their identities she had to write under a pseudonym of course she didn't have to choose a male name but she did and maybe she chose a male name because of um, science fiction was mostly men back then but there are other women that were writing back then that wrote as went wrote and published as as women like ursula le guin Ursula Le Guin started publishing well before James Tiptree came along. Anyway, um, I don't know the real answer to that. Maybe she was writing because she felt she couldn't get published as Alice Sheldon. Um, maybe she felt it sounded too much like a housewife. Or maybe it was strictly what I say to protect her identity because she had been employed by the CIA. Anyway... <clears throat> she did start writing as da James Tiptree Jr. and published most of her career as James Tiptree Jr. because very quickly she became really established. Everybody loved Tiptree's stories. And everybody thought it was a guy. And she didn't frequent the science fiction conventions, so nobody caught on until... Finally, she let the cat out of the bag that she was Alice Sheldon, and she started showing up at conventions. But by that time, James Tiptree Jr. was a bankable name, so she kept writing as James Tiptree Jr. So I'm going all the way back to number one, her very first published story. And for, for a writer that's very new wave, late 1960s, And I don't know if she was was a liberal politically, but you know she wasn't a traditional science fiction writer. It, she wasn't like Isaac Asimov. She wasn't like R Robert Heinlein. She wasn't like Murray Leinster. Uh, she was very new and different. She was more of the Le Guin, Joanna Russ, Jane Yolen kind of generation of of um, modern women writers that came into science fiction at that time. <clears throat> but even though nobody knew that. <laughs> um, so where she published her first short story is kind of surprising because she doesn't seem like the sort of writer that would get published in Analog in March of 1968, which... At that time, John W. Campbell Jr. was still editing the magazine. Okay, so she was not that 
1940s golden age hard science fiction kind of writer. But she published her first, her first story, a short story, in the March 1968 issue of Analog. And that story was purchased by John W. Campbell. Now, you got to... Certain things Campbell should get credit for that he generally doesn't. Such as the fact that when nobody else would publish Dune, Campbell bought it for Analog. It was originally serialized in Analog magazine. in the 1960s when John Campbell was editing. And, and of course, he published the first short story of James Tiptree Jr. So, I mean, he still was a really good editor, even towards the end of his life. And, and people don't give him credit for that. You know, for all the other things, for all the bad things people focus on, he was an excellent editor. And he did... Um, achieve a lot of great things for science fiction, including publishing Dune. And look what happened with that novel. And publishing the first short story by James Tiptree Jr., which is, and I'll finally get to it, it's called Birth of a Salesman. Not really one of Tiptree's most famous stories, but it's a very good story. I wouldn't call it great, but I would call it thoroughly enjoyable. And very funny, with a, a wry kind of sarcastic humor. Um, you might say it's coming from Alice Sheldon's experience with the government. Because the, the synopsis, synopsis of the story is basically a day in the life of a government official. Whose job it is to make sure that shipments going through it, interstellar space ways that they go through all the different alien planet ports safely and get to their destination and the you know so there's a lot of bureaucracy like there's a lot of bureaucracy in doing this but added to it is is all the idiosyncrasies of all the different alien cultures along the way and the story is just hilarious the 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 guy doesn't get frustrated, but as a reader, you just get frustrated with all the roadblocks in front of getting stuff shipped um, from one planet to another. And it's hilarious. It's a great story. Well, no, I just, just said earlier, it's not a great story, but it's a really good story and, and one that I recommend because I think you would enjoy. Um, I think it shows a lot of shades of what's to come from Tiptree, the style, the humor, the imagination that we were to get from the rest of Tiptree's work that made Tiptree such an incredibly powerful writer that really, really woke everybody up in the 1970s um, and, and made them take notice of this new force in science fiction. The 1970s were kind of a dry period in science fiction. There's not as many great classics written by new writers from like 1968 on through the end of the 70s. You, you've got you've got Greg Benford. You've got Greg Bear started writing. You got James Tiptree. You've got John Varley. There there are a few others, but most of what that time period is known for are the late works from the authors that got their start back in the 40s and 50s. So Tiptree is an important writer for that time period because she really did instill a very new voice into traditional science fiction. And... Uh, made people take notice. Won lots of awards. And uh, the, the... All the good qualities of Tiptree's writing are what make me a, still a huge fan of this author. I have been from the 1980s when I first read 
Tiptree. I didn't, didn't read Tiptree until I came across some stories in um, fantasy and science fiction and Isaac Asimov's during the 1980s. Which, which of course, she died not too long after I discovered her. Which is sad. Um, so, the story Birth of a Salesman, of course, comes from this issue of Analog, March 1968. I got a hold of a really, really nice copy of that issue. Such an old issue. The pages are not that yellowed, and the cover is pristine, like it came off the newsstand. It's also published in 10,000 Light Years from Home, a collection of Tip Tree stories. And I think it's in some other books as well, but those are the two that I'm most familiar with. And I only, I only have a paperback copy from Ace Books of 10,000 Light Years from Home. But I would recommend tip, looking up Tip Tree. Birth of a Salesman is definitely worth your time reading. It's only a short story. And um, many of the other works that I'm going to be exploring in this series about Tip Tree are going to be some of the very best that science fiction has to offer. I'll end you with that and let you go search out Birth of a Salesman and read it. Till then, like us and subscribe to us. Leave whatever comments you feel like leaving on this video. Keep them clean. Keep them nice. <laughs> um, but come back for more. Come back for more Tip Tree and Poe and Lovecraft and Heinlein and um, Philip K. Dick. Thank you.